Welcome to Value-Based Care Insights, brought to you by Lumina Health Partners, a national healthcare consulting and leadership development firm focused on improving the strategic, financial, and operational performance of provider organizations and its leaders. On this program, we explore trends and share valuable insights on how health systems and medical groups can navigate this increasingly complex healthcare environment and shift then to transform the delivery of care. Value-Based Care Insights is hosted by Daniel Moreno, Managing Partner of Lumina Health Partners. With over three decades of experience, Daniel specializes in helping organizations shape their strategic initiatives in areas of population health, clinical integration, physician alignment, information technology, and board retreats. For additional insights, visit our website, luminahp.com, and sign up for our newsletter. Dan, over to you. Welcome to Value-Based Care Insights. I'm your host, Daniel Marino. As organizations are moving into value-based care and focusing on managing their populations, oftentimes they're really driven by, say, some of the contracts they have with, with their payers. And many of the payers that we've talked about before have come to the organization saying, you know, we look, we, we want it to eventually enter into a risk-based contract, be more responsible for managing a population, and so forth. So they have an idea of, of how, where they want to go from a contracting standpoint, but from transitioning their organization to one of a, a fee-for-service structured culture to more of a population health focused culture, that's a shift in vision. And oftentimes what I see when I'm talking to leaders is there appears to be this disconnect between the vision of where they want to go and the technology that's important for them to get there. So you never want to lead with the technology, but the technology becomes an important conduit on helping the organization really achieve their goals. And I firmly believe that that's really, you know, couldn't be any more important than in the shift that we have moving ourselves into population health. Well, I'm really excited today to have three great guests join us in this discussion. The first is Julie Bonello. Julie is someone I've known for quite a few years a former CIO has been instrumental in working with leaders and health systems across the country on implementing technologies and really allowing organizations to, to experience the true opportunities related to technologies, data, and so forth. I'm also joined today by Brian Bentley and Nick Frenzer, both from Epic. Epic Health Technologies, as we all know, is the leader in electronic health technology within healthcare and with healthcare providers. So welcome all, very excited to have you as part of the program. Thank so you. So Julie, Thank you. maybe we could start with you. From your experiences, you know, as organizations are really focusing on their vision of population health, why do you think this, this disconnect exists between the technology and vision? Thanks, Dan. I think what we're finding is there needs to be a fundamental shift into how we implement technology for population health. If we look back at our history of implementing clinical systems from 2000 to 2010, we were implementing the electronic health record. And what we were doing back then is we were implementing an electronic health record for existing workflows. And Often what we did back then, we implemented um, a system to support our current workflow. So we didn't perhaps redesign like we should, or oftentimes we might have actually overcomplicated the implementation, and then it impacted the efficiency of our providers and care teams. Um, now, as we look to population health, we're implementing systems across a population health technology platform with components that all need to be interconnected. Um, and so now we need to ensure um, that we have a, the kind of rigor 
to plan the kind of IT structure processes are implemented and integrated with the population health programs right up front, actually during strategy, so that you develop your strategy and your technology platform direction at the same time, and you just um, evolve. We really do need to think about it more as a as a program base, more as a, as a culture shift. But but I'll tell you, you know, we've done a lot of strategy projects around helping organizations move into value-based care. The care model redesign, in my mind, is the foundation, right? People, physicians, providers, we, we need to deliver care differently. So, so Brian, in, in your opinion, as organizations are starting to evolve that care model, how do they need to, to align both the vision of where they want to go with the technology to support how they need to get there? Thanks, Dan. And, and so what I've observed and sitting in an IT role, but working with organizations on their on the strategy side, what I've observed is the evolution of team-based care and supporting primary care is really where most of the success stories start, at least for organizations. And when it comes to that, it, it's one, first choosing operationally, what are you going to focus on? And then bringing IT along with that to help make sure that it's done in the best way possible. But first we have to understand what are those key focus areas for the organization that align with value-based care, but can be standardized in a care model so that as an individual provider and, and the staff working for that clinic, that we're aligned on the same things for every patient as, as appropriate. And then we wanna get into making sure that we have the preventative care happening, that the access is prioritized for the right individuals who needs the most help uh, and most preventative care we have to deal with the fact that the consumerism of mech, how, how consumers want to interact with the health system is changing. And the fact that, that uh, staffing models are changing and, and short, we now need to automate as much as possible. So within those areas, and we can go into more detail later, but within those areas, there's choosing the goals and how to meet them as operations, but then having IT be the solution to help them do it most efficiently. Yeah, absolutely. And I think drawing that link becomes, you know, is, is critical, you know, and, and I've been fortunate enough to work in numerous organizations across the country. And um, I've always been very fond of, of the Epic product the, the, of solutions, but, but there's a lot of them, right? And they need to be, be integrated in order to support some of the care model redesign, support some of the analytics that need to be required, support us to really perform. Nick, in your experience, how do we, how has Epic helped support organizations sort of drawing that link, right? Bringing it all together. Is it, is it done after the fact? I would think they should almost be at the table, right? To really be part of that strategy to help really drive where we want to go. What's been your experience or what have you seen as you started to work with organizations? I think you're exactly right, Dan. As we look at a organization standing up a population health program, as Julie put it, the most successful organizations have the stakeholders all together. Um, what, what we see as a challenge and a risk is when we have an IT group focused on one direction, we have an operations group focused on another direction, and oftentimes we have, for example, primary care not even at the table from a leadership perspective. That creates this dissonance of goals. So I think the key is to get together uh, your primary care leadership, your population health leadership, your IT team, and your and um, your finance leadership to understand, are we all marching towards the same direction? Is this what our CEO's vision of population health looks like? Because when you ask different stakeholders, what does population health mean to you? There can be very different expectations. So we need to start and understand what are our goals within primary care? How are we going to change behavior? And how are we going to incentivize that type of behavior change? Because one of the interesting facets of population health and value-based care is you can talk about it a lot, but until we've started to influence behavior to change how we approach patient care, then we're not going to achieve those goals. When we see groups that are um, you know, starting to miss shared savings and start to not quite see that outcome that they're looking for, it is usually that behaviors and incentives are not aligned. So by starting at day zero, when we're setting that strategy and that vision, that's where the magic really happens. And Julie, I'm curious your take on that because I think that gets very much to the program approach that you were talking about. 
Yeah, absolutely, Nick. I mean, it's interesting because when you put your governance structure together, you're really bringing together all your stakeholders. And those are stakeholders that include um, uh, some of the providers that may not be, um, that might be affiliates, right? So it really is across the continuum um, to bring together all the stakeholders. And then when you're thinking about your technology platform, your platform also has to include the technology of all your stakeholders as well, which is really important now. Um, the other piece is um, bringing your technology vendors to the table um, and also um, bringing your payers. Um, and so when you put together um, your tiers of governance, um, you have to figure out um, how you can do that successfully. Speaking my language, I think the key here as well, and Julie touched on this, is not to focus on a tools-based solution. Not to look at, well, I think I need a tool for a specific component of this, but instead to think, what is that business objective I'm trying to accomplish? Do I have specific programs within Medicare Advantage that I want to focus on? Do I want to focus on a specific clinic with a value-based care approach? And then the tools will come from there. Um, everybody within the industry is providing a number of ways to approach this problem, but successful organizations start with the problem and then solution around that versus identifying the latest and greatest tool that they think will solve their problems. Because if you don't start with that business objective, the tools will not solve your problem. Yeah, that's very true. And you know, the other thing too, and I guess I'd like to talk about this for a second, many organizations now are moving into um, Medicare Advantage and associated with Medicare Advantage are a lot of performance activities that will better define the risk factors, capture HCCs, and so forth. And that is definitely a paradigm shift that has to occur both with the use of technology, the care models, in order to drive those results. So when organizations think about that, and let's say they're going to get more involved in Medicare Advantage and eventually more risk-based contracts with their commercials, um, where do you believe, and Julie, we'll start with you, where should the technology, where should the CIO be in that conversation? Should they be part of those discussions and those negotiations? Should they be part of the strategy around activation? How do you start to align those conversations? Your IT leader um, should definitely be a part of it, right? Whether, depending on the organization, whether it's the CIO or your main IT leader for Pop Health, but you definitely want to start building in all of your technology and interoperability requirements to support all of your contract requirements. Um, in the future, in order to, for us to really manage to performance measures, uh, regardless uh, for what program they might be for, um, we have to improve our interoperability and our data sharing so that we have the full complement of data to actually um, bring in, uh, calculate, and then provide to the care team so that they have real-time actionable insights to follow up on care. In, in order for us to do that, it gets back to that plat population health technology platform I was talking about before and ensuring that everyone understands that, that they need to share data and they need to support an integrated workflow um, as, a, as a point of working together. So if you're just joining us, I'm Daniel Marino. You're listening to Value-Based Care Insights. We're having a wonderful discussion on how the technology and the platforms associated with it does need to really drive and support population health initiatives of organizations. Um, so, so Nick, when when we think about what Julie just mentioned, there's a there's evolving aspects of the use of technology. There's interoperability. There's the data and the extraction of data, making actionable insights. There's the workflow design that helps us um, not only incorporate the data that we need to, to use, but really to drive a lot of more prospective outcomes related to that. How should organizations begin to approach the use of that technology? Do they focus it on a, mar uh, a, a module by module perspective? Or should they be really thinking about more of a technology plan 
that does grow and align with where that vision and, and the performance goals should be? I think it starts, you know, you mentioned it, Dan, this is an exercise in data and in a lot of ways, data analytics. And I think in a fee-for-service world, it was well understood that we needed those components of understanding what goes into that um, to make decisions and design workflows around that. Um, within population health, where I like to start is say, let's look at your clinical data. Let's look at the information you have. Let's evaluate other sources to understand how we can get more insights. But then let's look before you go into a payer negotiation or you look at your next level of risk and say, what are you successful at? Where do you have opportunity so that the organization is equipped with that to make good decisions? And starting with areas where um, we know that they're successful. So if we know that the colorectal screening rates within the organization are very good, that's very powerful information that we know how we need to act. If we see that mammography screenings are not as successful, well, then we know where to change behavior. But when we then think about that, right? So you're setting the vision, you're setting sort of the, the governance initiatives. How are we activating that, right? So how, from, from an EPIC standpoint, Brian, maybe you can speak to this. How is that then influencing the care model redesign or a team-based approach, say, of primary care so they're, so they're really able to latch onto that technology and truly use it as a tool? I think it, it starts in a couple of places and I want to just go back to something that Nick mentioned and that is starting with the data that you have. I think we all we all agree that data is everything and the use of data is everything, but too often groups may try to boil the ocean first and really there's an opportunity here to make sure you're starting with what you already know while simultaneously building having an eye towards the future of where you need to get and in that meantime to your question Dan on the activation. We, we want to work with groups on saying, well, from what you have already, this is where we know you can focus on with respect to quality. And in the meantime, we're also going to start building out um, and scaling for where you're going to get other data so you have a broader picture. But we want to start with what you have, bring what we can into primary care to have them focus on with their current state capabilities. What with an eye towards in the future, how are we going to, let's, let's, give up on the idea of these fee-for-service RVU-based models? How can we empower primary care and support them in a transition towards a model where what matters most is that they identify the right patients and proactively outreach and engage with the patients that need the most care up front? Right. So I think what we're saying is that IT needs to um, be a formidable partner in aligning the vision I think being part of those governance discussions and then obviously supporting the care model redesign. And then I think some of the, the end result as we think about say the delivery of primary care differently, um, the compensation model should support it, right? And we talk about that many times aligning the incentives, but an important element in helping organization physicians in particular be successful in say a new compensation model is how they use the technology, right? How they understand the data. And then frankly, then the support system that helps to drive that success. Care management as an example, right? So that as a tool has to be fit into the whole plan that helps that transition into population health outcomes and into where we want to go within value-based care. Julie, any thoughts? Sure. Um, what you say is so important about the data. I would hate for us to recreate some of the inefficiencies that we implemented through our EMR or EHR implementations with, with um, the inefficiencies for our providers now with population health implementation. When we look at data, we have to make sure that we get the data through interoperability. We right. have to make sure that we have the rigor to do that now. And we have to know um, the technology of our trading partners in order to make that a reality. And that that, that is an important um, component of their responsibility in working with us. Um, the If we don't do that, we're going to make providers, our care team and our patients um, care even more fragmented because the data won't be available for follow-up and 
and real-time action. Well, and even the use of the technology will be too fragmented, right? Exactly. We're just, we just continue to add on to the fragmentation. So, so Nick, let's talk about that for a second, because as, you know, as I mentioned, and certainly in my experience in with Epic, there are a lot of great tools or a lot of great modules. And I think one of the values that Epic brings to the table is it from a technology standpoint, it is integrated, but, but do you feel like providers do, do they understand it? Do they understand truly the integration of that technology? And if they were to use it properly, aligned with where their strategy is and their vision of population health, they could truly see those as outcomes? Or, or are they still focused on implementing certain modules to solve a problem, being, you know, sort of supporting what Julie kind of talked about, that fragmentation of the technology? Yeah. Well, Dan, when I think of the providers who are on the ground in clinics providing care or in a hospital setting providing care, um, they're too busy to worry about the technology deployment strategy. What they want are actionable insights at the point of care that make sense and allow them to focus on the patient and not on the EMR, the computer screen. So I think as we talk about setting this strategy, you know, our approach at Epic for over 40 years has been an integrated system that is one place that is a cohesive view for a patient to, uh, provider to care for a patient. And I think when we start to stack things on top of that, you know, there are always products that will add value Mm -hmm. within an integrated EMR system. But what we need to think about is what is that provider's experience and what is that patient's experience? Because making a provider go to another screen or do something else is the surefire way to make sure it doesn't happen. The way to do it is to load it into an integrated view, an integrated process and workflow for a provider so that when they're with the patient or when they are looking at a patient's chart before a visit, that they can quickly load those things in and take action on them. So I think approaching it can't just be from a, well, we have a new solution that's going to make the world better, but what are we going to put in front of the provider? What is that view that they are going to have that then we can go to provider leaders and get their feedback and say, is this going to work for you? Because ideally a provider doesn't have to think about, about that technology deployment. It just makes their life easier. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'll tell you, it's, it's the old, it's the old adage, people process and technology, right? So if we have the vision of where we want to go, our people have to evolve. Our processes have to evolve. And our technology has to evolve in such a way that it's the partner of achieving the strategy. I I, I firmly believe that. And that's that's a great point you made. So I I wanna thank all three of you for for joining me today. Just a great discussion. I I know this is an area that many organizations struggle with. Um, I know that firsthand because I'm in conversations with with many of the leaders and aligning the technology with the vision and achieving some of the population health goals are are certainly uh, a top of mind issue. If we, Julie, we could start with you. If, if, If there's any advice that you would give to your CIO colleagues out there who may be listening, what would you say to them about, you know, what they need to think about with data interoperability, alignment of that technology to meet their pop health goals? Um, A couple things, Dan. The first thing is that really redefining the way we're now implementing for pop health is also the kind of the same for digital health too, quite frankly, but it is really implementing across a platform now. And it requires a different rigor and a different way of working than uh, we've had in the past, which requires that we embed IT best practices into the front end um, programs of of the pop health program, into the the collaborative structure. The other thing I just wanna mention, Um, because this is uh, um, so many great points have been mentioned through the podcast, is when we talk about um, clinical redesign and workflows, the best um, um, opportunity we have and um, toward really improving efficiencies in implementing POP Health with your platform is having it be clinically led. Oh, um, absolutely. The, Great. The best point. way, the best yep. way is is by having really clear roles and responsibilities from clinical leaderships at every single level of the pop health program so that these systems can really be implemented to support care efficiently. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Um I think having it physician led, clinically led, that's what really brings it together and frankly, I think keeps keeps all of us, particularly an organization, focused. 
Brian, when, when you think about giving some advice or, or think about how organizations could advance some of their, their care models or team-based models, or even frankly, implementing care management aspects, what advice would you give them about where to start and, and how to better ensure that they're integrating the technology? It starts with making sure that for any changes you have planned, you know how you will measure the, the before and then the after. So measuring that improvement that you made with your changes. So, so much of the discussion today appropriately is around how do we get use the data to find what's the right next step for us to focus on operationally in IT, how do we bring it to the point that the provider can act on it easily or the care team around the provider. But then last, we have to remember that we need to be able to measure and prove that this is making the right changes, or otherwise we need to change and adapt. So being able to measure as you go. Right. That's great. That's great. And I want to thank everyone, our listeners today for listening. Until the next insight, I am Daniel Marino, bringing you 30 minutes of value to your day. Thanks and take care. Are you at a crossroad with value-based care? Do you need to chart a future strategy or improve your organization's performance? Visit us at LuminaHP.com to learn more about our professional advisory services and leadership development programs. Also, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. To connect with Daniel Marino or for more information about the show, visit our website or healthcarenowradio.com. Join this conversation using our hashtag BBC Insights. We are Lumina Health Partners. Thank you for joining us today. Until the next value-based care insight, stay well.